Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Dave with Alum House. I'm excited to bring another video about the X32 and the live streaming environment that we're living in. So what I've got here is some tracks playing from my church. And the question that I wanna to answer today is, how do we take our live streaming from just copying our main output to actually having its own individual mix? In the first video of this series, we talked about how we can take our main output and send that output directly to USB, one and two output, and into our streaming software. That was great when we were only in our quarantine state and the whole console uh, served just for live streaming. Now, some of us have moved back into our, our normal environment where we have a live service. And what we've done is we needed to have a separate volume. So we took this main output and we copied it over to a matrix, which was down here, matrix one and two. And you can see that that is a mirror of our main output, but it's an independent volume. So we can actually turn our main volume in our house up or down, and that has no impact on the audio going to our stream. So that's good because we can keep uh, not only the, the volume levels separate, but also running this matrix, we have the ability to, to have independent dynamic EQ set up for our matrix. And we even went through the last time and set up a effect. We used this, this limiter down here, effect number eight, and we had set that to be matrix one, and we had set it to be matrix two. And that way we had not only uh, independent EQ and compression capabilities, but we also had some limiting set up as well. So that's all specific to the stream, but now that's just taking a copy of your main mix. So right now, everything that we're doing on the left-hand side to build the mix in our room, we're just sending a direct copy, and then we're maybe doing some EQ changes and bringing the volume up uh, with limiting for our broadcast level. But how do we take this concept and now use this console to build a mix for front of house and a mix for our stream? So let's talk about that now. So the easiest way to do this is we're going to take some buses and we're going to make a stereo bus and we can build a mix on that bus. So to start out with, we will take and look through our buses. I have various buses here that are not being used in my current setup. So I'm gonna choose two of them that are right next to each other. Let's say I leave one through four for some monitors for my band, but I can take five and six and use those for a stream mix. So I'll start out by hitting, uh, selecting bus one, and then I'm going to come up here on, on this screen and link them together. So now bus five and six are linked together. I'm also going to quickly just change the color in the setup tab. I'm going to go over to our name and icon and just by changing the color, it's going to bring attention to the fact that that's different. We can go in and name it that it's our stream or whatever the case may be, but just having them a different color will catch our eye for right now. So at this point, we've got a uh, we've got a bus set up. It is stereo, which means that if we look at the pan knob up here, you'll see that one of them is panned hard left and the other is panned hard right. So at this point, we can use the sends on fader button. And what it's going to do is it's going to t change these inputs from mixing to our main to now it's going to be a mix to our recording bus. So typically what we have is drums in our room are loud and we have them turned down. But in this scenario, we need to actually raise, we need to raise that level of our drums up because the stream does not have the benefit of the room. So we can now build our mix and let's say we put kick drum a little higher and snare drum, we've got some floor tom in there. These are our cymbals. Maybe bass guitar is sufficient where it is, electric. Maybe we bring up our acoustic guitar. We've got some pads here. Uh, that we can hide in, maybe piano, and then we have our vocals as well. So this gets us a mix into our stream. Now, the other thing that we have the ability to do, if we go back to Sends on Fader, 
is we can put some effects into this mix as well. So on the left hand side, we can come down to the aux in and effects returns. And here we have the ability to take some of our effects. I know that these effects right here, this is a reverb for the band. I can add some reverb for the band into that mix. This is a reverb, uh, one vocal reverb. This is a room reverb for the vocal. I could add that in. And then this is a delay, which I would want to be cautious about how much I put into the mix, but you could add that in as well. And that's all going into your stream mix. That will help set the mix into a room sound, which your house mix is in a room, but your stream needs to be uh, have a room artificially created for it. So adding those effects can really help sweeten up your mix. Again, if we go back to our sends on fader button, we're now back to normal with everything on the left and we're now mixing again for our room. So at this point we have set up a stereo aux channel here on, on mix bus five and six. We've built a basic mix and we put some effects in here all for our stream. Now, how do we get the stream out through our USB as an example. Well, the first thing we might wanna do is actually raise the levels up like we've talked about in previous videos. So to do that, if we hit the home button up top and I'll zoom in here. So to start out with here, we've got bus five and six are selected here. And what we can do now is we've got the ability again to make some EQ changes. Let's say that in our, in our stream, we actually need to have a little bit more low end and so what we can do is start out by uh, maybe doing a drop there, but then we can do a nice gradual boost here in the low end. Okay, a little bit. Maybe the middle has a little bit of mud here in this four to 500 hertz range, and so we actually need to drop that down some, but we wanna add maybe a little bit of top end clarity so we can raise the top end just a little bit and maybe that's what we need for our mix. Now you've got to listen to this uh, in some headphones and evaluate what you need. You also have the ability to add some compression. All right, and so by turning this on, maybe we do a standard uh, kind of four to one with a 40 millisecond uh, attack, zero hold, and then a super fast release of, of maybe, uh, I don't know, let's say 10 milliseconds. And what we can do then is we can bring this down just to we're taking out maybe two or three dB, okay? And what you're gonna see is it's mostly gonna get your kick drum uh, and, and maybe your snare, but we've maybe made those changes to get some compression. So if we go back to the home, to the home tab, now we have built a mix. We've got some EQ and some comp compression specific to our, um, to our stream, but now that same limiter we're gonna use for this instead. So if I hit effects, I have a limiter set up on effects eight, and all I wanna do is use these encoders to find mix bus five. So bus five, select, and then bus six, select. Then I want to insert them. And if we go back here and look, now we have EQ, compression, and we've inserted a limiter, which is gonna raise that, that level up on this bus. So at this point, we're ready to send this signal out to our stream. So the first thing we wanna do is come over to our routing, and we can mouse uh, or scroll over here to our, um, our outputs. And what we can do is select outputs um, in this case, output or mix bus five, okay, is going to mix bus five signal. So that's fine. Output six is going to mix bus six. So we can actually use those. We could hook up XLR cables at that point and, to those two and send them into a, uh, into a camera. And that camera could carry the signal into our streaming computer, or they could go directly into maybe a, um, a Blackmagic TV switcher, something like that. But let's say we wanna run them USB. Well, we've got output five and six here designated, so all we have to do is go over to our user outs. And in most of our streaming software, the USB will default 
to channels one and two of USB. So in this case, what we're going to do is set output one and we're going to scroll down to output and then we're going to find output five and hit assign. And then the next one we go down and this will be output six and assign. So that gets it set into our custom outputs. Now, if we go all the way back over to our card out, you'll see that this first group of eight is set to user out one through eight. And what that's showing over here is that one and two relates to mix bus five and six. So just to recap, we started out by setting up our, uh, our stereo linking of bus five and six. Um, you could do this on any pair. It just has to start on an odd number and link to an even number. We then use the sends on fader button to build a basic mix. And we even came over and added in some effects to really make that mix sound like it's in a room. After we finished that, we came back over we set at the home screen, we set some EQ and some compression for our stream. And then we added in a limiter by going into the effects tab and uh, setting the limiter, the precision limiter to be affected onto that bus five and six. The final thing we did is came over to our routing tab. We went over to the custom user outs. We set up output one and two to map to output five and six, which correlates to these mix buses. And then we came all the way over to our card and made sure that we saw card output one through eight is reflecting in fact, mix bus five and six over here on the top right corner. If you want to, you could change these to be post fader, which just means that this, uh, this fader would actually be a volume control for your stream. Uh, that could be beneficial. The challenges to that is that if, if your user or your engineer hits it by chance, then your way up or way down or even slight movements, then your mix volume is not going to be consistent. Um, I recommend using the limiter to gauge your overall volume and looking here at what you've got as opposed to using this in post fader environment. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you've got questions or you want more guidance on what we're doing with this X32, leave them in the comments and I would love to help you out. Um, if you found it helpful though, give me a thumbs up because that helps the video get a greater reach and help more people to understand how they can use this console to best benefit their church, their stream, or whatever they're doing to make music. Well, thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.